We have been talking a little bit already, and I want to thank you for asking people to sign that petition about, you know, having my novels published in English. That was very kind of you. So thank you for that. Uh, you are a YouTuber um, that I just recently discovered, I should say, and um, you're, uh, I think we have a lot in common. Uh, we talk about connecting with nature. You have a love of trees. Uh, I think we both love trees and nature in general. C can you just tell the viewers a little bit if they if they are not already familiar with your channel, what are you about? What what are your channel about? Um, my channel really is about me and my life to a degree, it, part of it. Um, and also just showing that vegetables can be grown very easily. It's really not, a how many people have said to me, I, um, well, how do you do it? How do you do it? And I'm like, look, I'm no expert. It's not really that hard to do. So yeah, growing vegetables, um, making things like knives and axes, um, some survival skills. I wouldn't call myself an expert on any of these topics. I would call myself in English what we say, jack of all trades um, and, and sharing a bit of nature as well. Uh, you know, I, being a Norwegian, um, I find myself watching YouTube videos, especially from England, um, around, well, I do that all year round, of course, but especially when I, I start missing the green leaves on the trees, well, that's actually, I, 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 that's, you know, November for me, but, you know, um, because the spring arrives earlier in England than in Scandinavia, and uh, it's so beautiful to see the green leaves you know um i just love watching people who are sharing their love for nature and for yeah you you know growing vegetables something as simple and difficult i think it's difficult <laughs> as that you know it, it, it brings me great joy to just to watch people doing that you know yeah um, i i vegetables for me i got my love for that but even though i didn't continuously do it my my grandfather was blind i was very close to my oh. grandfather mm. and um but he grew vegetables he grew potatoes he grew carrots he grew runner beans french beans he grew all that stuff so he you know he 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 sort of helped i think helped me develop in my not my life this one with nature um because he kind of had to and he did explain to me that he had to become understanding of nature um and anyone any i think that's just one of them things it's surprising what people can do when they focus on a task and research about it and do it humans are capable of everyone says I can't do, I've heard lots of people say, and I've said it myself before, well, I couldn't do that. But if I tried, I'm sure I could. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it, you know, I, it's, it's like lots of people are now getting back to those basic skills, you know, um, People are talking about the pandemic. They are talking about, you know, things are changing around us. And uh, so, so in Norway, we are seeing this, what, what's the word? Well, people getting into the outdoors, hiking and all that. And which is, you know, awesome. I, I think that's, that's great. Um, whatever your motivation is. And on your channel, you have been talking about connecting with nature. Um, can you just talk a little bit about what that means and why it's important? Well, I, I would like to start this by telling a little story, um, if that's okay. It's not very long. 
Um, and it's about my wife. So, and she won't mind. She can always give me a slap around the head later. But when I, you know, that was when I was about 23, I did start growing vegetables. We ran out of lettuce in the house. And I turned around to my wife and I said, that's okay, I've got some. And she said, I'm not eating that. That's from the garden. <laughs> you see, uh, uh, so, but for me, being one with nature, we're part of nature. Uh, we have a responsibility for, for nature. Um, also, without it, we're nothing. We don't, we will not exist without it. So helping it is very important. Uh, but when you get into the woods, when you get into the woods, there's just this feeling for me, this feeling. I don't, I can't understand it. I like to say it's like magical or something along those sort of lines. It's an energy, whatever it is, I don't know. But, and if you're still, and watch, you will see nature in all its glory. If you stop by and look at a fallen tree and you see what I call the cleanup crew, the fungi, like the turkey tails and stuff like that, which are just so beautiful. And then the insects, it's just even down to the small details, you, watching nature and it, there was a study done, um, about depression and now please don't quote me anyone on the statistics i will try my best but i think that something like one in six people in the western world have taken antidepressants well there was an they done a study in papua new guinea of hunter gatherer tribes and i'm pretty sure and that sounds like a large number but i will have to go back and check on that but if i'm wrong you know, but it was a good large number. It was around about 6,000. There was only a couple of people that had very, very, very slight signs of this. Hmm. Now, hunter-gatherers, have to, they, they live life by being one with nature because nature provides. We go to the supermarket and that's all there prepared and everything like that. But you, you take that away... And this, what I'm trying, I suppose what I'm trying to get at is that nature is, it's here for us. Nature can be chaotic as well. Okay. You know, there's a beautiful thing about nature, but nature can be volcanoes um, and other, other things. And, and also if you have no skill at all at being able to survive, um, nature can be very chaotic and seem very not a nice place, which in fact it is, if you realise that there are loads of wild edibles in, you know, in forests across the Northern Hemisphere. I can't say for jungles, I know there is, because I know that gatherer survived, but I haven't really researched any wild edibles in jungles. Um, yesterday, the, the sort of um, highlight of my day, I've never seen it before, but I was sitting down after ha working on the working on my new little bit of land, and of course, when you work on the soil, the robin comes out. You know the robin? Oh yeah, with the red rostrupe. Yeah. We call it the rostrupe, I yeah. believe, here in Norway. Yeah, yeah. the red um, chests. Yes, that's what. Um, I mm. sitting there, and it was curious about being around me and then it realized because i just sat dead still it didn't move and uh and as it flew towards me it hovered for just a few seconds and i was like like a hummingbird would and i'd never seen that before and i was like wow i didn't know robins could do that okay that was brief but it was it's just nature if you watch and wait can surprise you in so many ways yeah, you you have um, added two plots of land or, or more that you have. Uh, I, I work on the land where I live, mm. but I also have this new bit which has got a lot of work to do. But yeah, so I yeah, I, I, I saw that video. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I, I'm I sure it's beautiful. Yes, 
Mm. I'm, I'm quite lucky because there's quite a lot of um, there's some gooseberries, um, there's some raspberry. There's quite a lot of raspberry, uh, black currant, and this is you know some of it needs to be controlled because. Mm. Uh, raspberry can grow, you know, it sends out them shoots and it, it grows and keeps spreading out. But yeah, I'll, I'll, and a plum tree as well mm. with uh, purple plums, which is very nice because the plum I've got in my garden is the what we call the green gauge, it's a green plum. Um, and yeah, but here where I live, I have, yeah, two polytunnels. One is mine. And the other one was mine, but my wife over the last few years has become so much more involved in gardening. She's claimed that polytunnel, so I've lost that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that what we have done here is that um, we have bought um, the properties, uh, the neighbor properties, well, some of them, and we have a huge piece of land surrounding our house not like Houston. we don't own a forest but it's well it's a small forest uh, it's a an area that is large enough for us to affect the wildlife here because we are creating a corridor from the forest through uh the pop not the populated area but through the area where there are houses and down to uh basically the 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 stream area, the, the sea and the coastal area there. So um, we have so many bees and, uh, and insects um, because we have so many flowers. We, they were there already, but I'm going to continue developing um, the land around the house and um, it's you know, it, it to me, it's, it's immensely fascinating because I can sit and watch the squirrels as they move through the treetops. And without our trees, they wouldn't be able to reach the other part of what well, is the other forest here. And you have another forest here. And we're sort of a corridor in a way to the other side. Um, all around us, uh, there are nice gardens, but no trees. No trees. Well, they maybe well, maybe they have a little small tree with flowers on it, you know. But it's nothing like nature. And um, we also have two huge oak trees that are now protected, because I called uh, the county, and I said we have two huge oak trees here. Do you want to protect them? And they said, well, yes. And you know what? They also said that it was, it's not often that people call them to get new trees in, on that list of protected oak trees that we have here in Norway. When people call them, it's because they want to remove those trees. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's like, I I'm frustrated. A lot of the time um and i'm because the people around me here are you know they like taking a walk in the forest but they also they you know they don't have any i think it's a lack of understanding of nature wildlife and you know the whole ecosystem there um and they might be you know all into the you know environmentalism thing and and all that and everything <laughs> is green and but they they don't mind if the people up here they chop down all the trees no, no that's that's just they they're planting new trees little tiny trees that are die after yeah. the first year so uh, yeah so i'm actually i can tell you that i feel most of my videos up in these woods here and it's now becoming very difficult because they are building on both sides and I'm picking up so much noise and I also have the, it's not a very small woodland or anything, but it's, it's still noisy. And I have the helicopter going back and forth with building materials. Yeah. 
that's yeah that, that's there's nothing worse than being in the woods and for me um i did watch your videos and i could hear the helicopter and the noise going on and and that made me feel like i know what it's like when i'm there and if i was there i'd be like this is i i came to the woods not for this so much it's in it feels encroaching it feels um you know, like you, you get out to escape from every, for me, I'm, I'm sure it is for you to escape everything, modern life, everything and, and get out there. It, it's to me, it feels more normal to be in the woods than it would to be in a sub- suburban area or a city or anything like that. Yeah. They, these places, humans, I'm going on a different subject here, but I'll, I'll try and finish it quickly. Humans weren't designed to live in boxes in large okay. cities. Um, and, well, I say designed, whatever, however, you know, take my words um, with a little bit of, but what people are, and they're blind to the, blind, a lot of people are blind to the fact that these cities are unhealthy for people. And I really do believe that. And and I really didn't want to head that direction towards the whole political science stuff and all of that. But that people are so blind and some of them, it's not their fault. You know, they they grow up in a household that's been brought up and then brought up by this changed school system in a way hmm. to to not look at the bigger picture, to be sceptical. If you're a sceptical person, now, if you're a wild wild person or wild man, as you say, um, and I would say that quite a lot of wild men are sceptical. Now, they call, then they say, no, you're a conspiracy theorist. And it's like, no, it's healthy to be sceptical. Without Mm -hmm. scepticism, it's, I think it's to do with people there's more than one type of science. There's political science, which is, then goes into the mainstream media, which if you actually research some of the, when I grew up, I never ever thought that a newspaper would be allowed to print things that aren't correct. Exactly. But exactly. It, it's not true at all. It's not true at all. And, and unfortunately it was later, at least I woke up to it. It was later on in my life, whereas if you actually do a study on the stories that some of them, some of the stories that they print, there is, they use words like should, could, or scientists say without naming any scientists. Yeah, and I'm really sorry, everyone, that we were talking about being one with nature, but that does have something to do with being one with nature, in my opinion. But, yeah, I yeah, absolutely I'll, agree. Yeah. Well, I, just let me say that. Uh, I have been criticized for becoming too political on YouTube. And there are people, they will typically write, why don't you go back to making Viking videos? Uh, This uh, conspiracy nonsense that you're doing now is nobody's interested in that. First of all, that's wrong. Uh, Secondly, um, I truly believe that especially now that I'm a father, well, I have been a father for many years. I know you're a father as well. Uh, We have a responsibility to speak out against this because if I was, you know, the the easiest option would be to say, no, I'm not getting into the political stuff. No, no, no. I'll just sit here and hope that everything turns out okay and hope that I will still be allowed to do the things that I always done. And that's irresponsible. Uh, when you have a voice, you, you should use that voice. And, and this is this is not a test, as as they say. You know, this is the real thing. We need to speak out now. And and uh, you know, I, I I don't want to. I don't think it's you know it's fun to speak about these things. But as you say, it goes into the whole. It goes. It threatens our way of living i would say being one with nature and and as is also said lots of wild men we are skeptical um i i I studied scientific method 
at the university, um, which was very useful. Now it's just nonsense. You know, it, this is not this what's going on around us. You know, it's it's not following proper scientific method. And also, let me tell you one thing here. Uh, I'm in a unique position. Um, I have a I, I wake up very early, and sometimes I wake up at two a.m can't sleep and then I've gotten used to just starting working. Sometimes uh, if I also have a headache, I'm not going to go into the complaint too much, Burr, but but the thing is if I have my headache is you know too bad, I, I it's it's too painful. I can't write as a novelist. I'll have to sit and what I do sometimes I read the news. I shouldn't because it's frustrating. But my point is if you read the news at 2 a.m. and then read the news at 8 a.m., they have changed the contents, right? Because they are writing news to get clicks and they will rather write things that are incorrect, but will get them the clicks and then they change the details as the details come in. They, they don't take the time to go out and actually research what they're saying. So it's, you know, it, it's, this needs, we need to call these people out. Yeah, definitely. And it is very important to, and but people may say, like for your channel, no, we want you to go back to talking about Viking stuff and, and bushcraft and all that. But how can you not speak? How can, how can a person not, I mean, I, I, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I have a problem. My problem is, is that I seem to speak out what I believe is the truth or is the truth. And now that doesn't go down so well in friendship circles. So I have a small friendship circle because people don't like it when you speak a truth, especially if, you know, you they say and use and say mainstream media as their science and you use and science as your science and usually how it actually ends up. And I've had these debates with people is that they end up just getting angry. Whereas I'm not angry because I'm like, it, it's there. The, 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 you look at it, you're, look, look at it for yourself, but they don't want to. They'd rather say, quote something from the Guardian newspaper or something. Um, but yeah, and, and I don't, I, I rarely believe it's good to speak out. And I think it's good to speak out. And, and, and that's another thing. Why, why the anger? Why the anger and uh, if you don't believe what, say, Bjorn is saying, then you can move on. Move on. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I, I would like to say also that, um, and this is, you know, a little bit of a sidetrack, the way YouTube works is that, well, not let me start in the other at the other end here. I'm uploading more Viking related videos now than I used to do like two years ago or three years ago, or you know, more, more of those videos now. But I upload more videos in total as well. And what YouTube tends to do is it will not notify even my subscribers of all my videos. If you haven't checked the bell and chosen all notifications, for some reason, not very many of the, 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 the subscribers do that. So YouTube will then pick and choose which of my new videos you will be notified of. And people might say that they are interested in videos where I talk about some detail from the Viking uh, age, for instance, but in truth, the truth is that they are not watching those videos to in the same freq frequency or, or you know as they watch other videos. And and this has to do with again, you know, <laughs> what you are actually spending time on is the things that you are emotionally invested in. And to most people right now, I believe that's that those changes that we are seeing either if you're totally on board with whatever your government says, or if you're a, more of a skeptic, 
you're in emotionally invested in this. Uh, I would say the skeptics are less emotionally invested in this um, than the people are, who are totally on board with the whole thing. That's my guess. But um, <laughs> yeah, so a bit of a sidetrack track there. But um, when it comes to this closeness to nature, this is something I feel lots of lots of people they don't really know what it is um even people who live outside of the cities they 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 have a hard time grasping that concept and some people they think it's a, some kind of a hippie thing you know we, we hug the trees you know? <laughs> I, I think it's very nice to hug trees but but um uh, and i can uh, even uh, have i can even get this sense of a um that that was my my telephone. By the way, I have to get some peace and quiet. I have these old. I have one for work, one for private use. Ancient phones, you know. You can text them. <laughs> cool. I, That's all. In two thousand and nineteen, <laughs> I had a Nokia thirty two ten for nine months. I gave yeah. up smartphones. Mm. Then work forced me back to having one. But I'm getting to the point where I might be ready. To go back to the Nokia 3210, but I need a camera to make videos. So uh, it might be on Father on Father's Day. We uh, I don't know in Norway if you do this, but in June sometime we have a, like a Father's Day um, mm. where you're meant to make cups of coffee for your father and look after him. Uh, I'd like to see that happen. But I'll be getting a new camera. So because I can tell you. I know, sorry, this is another sidetrack, but mobile okay. phones are the, are the new cigarettes. Sorry? Mobile phones, are the, mobile phones are the new cigarettes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's made people anxious. That makes people addicted. And and I know, and I'm not saying, I, I've got a smartphone, so but I will be heading towards not having one again because actually, if anything, it drives me crazy. And not just that, I am also concerned i can remember when mobile phones really came out sort of hold on let me think 2000 2001 they or 1999 they started really sort of ramping up ramping up all the health warnings that were on tv and everything about mobile phones let's not forget that remember people there was i don't know about in norway but in england and scotland and wales there was adverts warning about how much time you spent using your phone because it could harm you. Now, in mobile phones, it's not easy to find, but there is YouTube videos out there that show you where to find it. There is like a disclaimer thing, basically saying that it's your responsibility. You have bought the phone, pretty much. Yeah, we and it's no also in the in the little uh, booklet or thing what that follows in in the box. That's in the box when you buy the phone. Uh, it says exactly the same, uh, and it. Yeah, so I I truly believe that we should get away from smartphones. And but when it comes to being close to nature, um, I I have this sense of almost hearing a voice. I, I don't believe there is a a voice, but it's a feeling of a voice when I'm out in nature, especially when the the wind is blowing through the treetops. That's, you know, it's a magnificent sound, but it's something there that I cannot explain and I don't need to explain it. Um, but it's something and it's yeah, yeah. a presence of something. And I think it's nice that we don't understand it fully, you know. <laughs> um, and so if you're a Christian, I, I guess many Christians, I know they have this intense relationship with nature and they would say that's god you know which is beautiful um and uh, a heathen man like myself would maybe say well that's the gods that's the ancestors and so on it doesn't really matter but there is something there um and, and that's i want everyone to at least once in their life get that connection with nature yeah, yeah, I hundred percent agree with everything that you just said. I I would expand on it more, but I think Bjorn pretty much just said everything that I feel. I 
I have to admit, I talk, I talk to the All Father. I call him All Father. I don't know whether the, you know, there's so many gods on this planet, God or gods. I don't know. I'm just a human being. I, like you say, I, I don't want to know. I like. That's the problem with humans. We want to always figure out everything. Some things, it's let's say for instance, let's say for instance that a person could create a fireball in their hand, yeah, and then throw it. Everyone would say, oh, that's magic, that's magic. Then they'd go to the scientists, and then the scientists would study him, and maybe they would find that he was able to produce this chemical, um, and then, like, then a spark to, sh you know, and then they say, no, it's not magical. Science, science explained it. Well, it's, no, it's still magical. Just because science can explain something doesn't mean it's not magical. And I think that's part of the thing. That's a problem for people because it always baffles me. And, there's, and I, I appreciate the people that say that they don't believe in anything. Um, I can't understand that. Hmm. Yeah. I can't understand well, it's like, that. and also another way to look at it, it's my... With this thing here, I can talk with people that are not here. And with this thing I'm looking at now, I can talk to someone and see someone at the other side of an ocean. <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite insane when I think about it. But you know what? Outside my window, there are trees and plants that can transform the energy from the sun into something physical something we can eat even yeah so um to me that's a greater miracle you know um <laughs> <laughs> that is that is and also as well the changing of the seasons yeah. every time it approaches for me i'm like this little child i love it i mean you know, autumn. I always start autumn for some reason. I do love autumn. When, when every, when the forest and the woods and the trees, they all start changing, you know, into yellows and oranges and some of them fiery red colours. It's just beautiful. Hmm. And then when snow comes in winter, well, a lot of people, I don't know about, Nor well, I guess you're probably not so much in more used to it in Norway, but here in England, people moan about it if snow is around for more than a few days. And, uh, but to me, I'm like, I'm like, I, I say to people, why? Why do you not like it? Everything looks amazing and beautiful. Being in the woods while it's snowing. <laughs> yeah. mm. Then spring, when you've just had enough of winter, spring pops its head up. And the daffodils and uh, and the bluebells and the snowdrops and all the trees starting to bud and push out. And then that lush green of summer. Yeah, beautiful. as I said, um, you know, I miss the green leaves and right now I'm, I live in the south of Norway and right now green leaves are just starting to appear and what happens uh, is that um, this these properties that we have here they have this at the edges uh, because all the trees are still standing there um, we have this green wall that are around us, you know, which is beautiful. Um, I, I must admit, I did plant a uh, hedge, a uh, tuya hedge, <laughs> which, you know, is, is not very natural for this, uh, for Norway, but it's, it's the only option that will stay green during winter and that I can shape into a hedge. That's towards... Yeah. The closest houses. Uh, there is one part where there are houses quite quite close. So I need this wall there. But uh, yeah. apart from that, watching how the trees now turn turn you know bright green, it's so beautiful. Yeah, I I did I because you see there's another issue really that needs to be addressed is that. People in the well, especially here in England, um, or the whole of UK rather, people in suburban areas and city areas 
you need to plant some native species. The problem is, is that, and I know some of you do, so I'm not like you do it, you know, but the problem is, is that people, they come in and they put these beautiful gardens in and then they look lovely, but they do not help wildlife. Um, you, you can create a very beautiful, and you don't have to have everything native species, but you can add it to it. I took out a whole hedgerow of Leylandi, um, which I don't know if you know what Leylandi is. Um, beyond. It's, it's, like it. sure, no. it's a very, very fast grown sort of evergreen. It's like, um, it could be very, it's kind of similar. I don't know what you planted. I mean, maybe the Norwegian word's different. It could be similar to that. Um, but I'm not 100% sure because I couldn't see see them close. I did watch your video. I couldn't see them close up. But uh, um, yeah, it's very fast growing anyway. Um, and it, grow, it puts on, you know, it can put up, uh, you know, a meter or two a year, which is fast for a tree. Mm. Um, so I t didn't take them all out. I didn't take them all out. I left them there. They're not native. Um, so, but the birds still use it. But now I've put in a native hedgerow which is full of um, hawthorn, um, hazel, um, elder, and uh, and then I'll put some more around the garden. I'll put some oak in, uh, silver birch. And, you know, you don't have to go as mad as me, but still, and, and think, and people, please think, just because there's a lot of farmland around, especially here in where I live, there's a, a lot of farmland. Actually, that's, quite devoid of natural uh, na nature and um, wild species because um, and there's been scientific um, studies on this and they are very devoid of uh, natural wildlife so just because you think that there's a lot of farmland around is not helping it's it's it's, it's so we need to do our bit we, we you know even if you live in a city you could plant just something small and I put in a pond. The pond is, you know, good for the birds, the bees, and the amphibians. Can't forget the frogs and the newts, and and if you have lizards and snakes possibly around wherever you live. But having a pond's important as well. I, I very much believe so. It, I mean, there was some years ago that here in the UK you could even get a little bit of money for the gut from the government for building a pond. And and because there's things like this happening so everyone in their gardens have got not much natural um uh species but they're bringing 5g here in england and guess how many trees they're cutting down in suburban areas yeah five million trees five million trees oh, no. it's not just the poor trees it's also the animals that use these trees to live in Oh, that's all right. I'll end my rant there. <laughs> no, no, that's I didn't know. That's that's a lot of trees. Uh, that's a lot of trees. Uh, that's a scandal. Um, now, we we do have the deforestation problem in Norway, and I want to talk a little bit about that because Norway was, you know, used as an example of this is how you should do it to be, you know green <laughs> when it comes to uh, forestry uh, and because they have to plant a tree for every tree they they take take down or, or at least one tree but what people seem to forget is that and they did this in this in the woodland here i almost started crying but they cut down a 30 year old uh, spruce forest uh, those trees were big and I know they were 30 years old because I counted the rings on the stumps and they planted these little uh, saplings is that what they call them? Yeah. yeah. Now when it comes to the environment and CO2 and, CO2 and, and all that <clears throat> this little tree will take 20 to 30 years before it gets to the size of that big tree that was taken down so during those years it will not have obviously the same 
effect on the environment as the forest had before they cut it down. And people seem to forget that. I do understand that we need wood to build houses and, 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 and all that, but to, you know, when they could cut these forests down, I can't help noticing that they leave a lot of those trees, branches, and even, even the trees themselves. Uh, for some reason, they can't use it and they just leave it there. At least could they not tidy up after themselves? Could they at least use this for firewood? I don't know. Um, th this this is, uh, now it's me ranting here, but I get mad at these people because, <laughs> you know, I'm, my dream is, is to buy Norway. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be no, no more of that you know <laughs> that's a good plan that's a good plan we, we yeah, need it, to reforest not yeah like you said we need wood to build uh wood is we've used wood for thousands and humans have wood, used wood for thousands and thousands of years but there's give and take there's not enough forests in the world uh, for deforestation and there's not there's not enough. And like you say, the problem is, is that you're cutting down a big tree, which has an environmental effect, uh, but also has, you know, well, I suppose as well, the environmental effect also covers nature as well. And, um, you know, like animals and insects and stuff like that. But it's, the forest should be growing, not, if we need wood, plant even more trees. Don't yeah. plant enough trees just to cover that area. Be planting more. We're encroaching and encroaching through deforestation, farming, so many, so many things on nature. And what happens? I mean, that's the thing. What happens if there was a tipping point? You know, like the bees. Like if they said, mm -hmm. if we lost the bees, how? What would be the impacts? I don't think we would quite understand the impacts until it happened. And no, people are not used to star starvation. No, no. Now, if they were, Definitely they wouldn't not. do these things. So I, I think, well, I don't know, but I hope that if people knew what starvation is, they would not be so okay with what's happening around us. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yes, we. I think, I think we we do. I say we, as in like, the, especially the West on talk, uh, you know, I talk about when I, uh, you know, so I'm talking about Western society, we waste so much food, we throw away so much food, we over, a lot of the time we overpile our plates. Now, sometimes I understand, you know, I used to do architectural steel work, and my job was heavy, heavy work. So I needed a lot of calories. And I worked with this guy, he was humongous his old biceps were as big as my head and he said to me if i ate more he said the problem is i was burning more calories than what i was eating that's why i never sort of bulked up a bit more but the thing is us well, however much do i need to eat i already eat a lot you know a full fried breakfast you know everyone that's all we used to do full fried breakfast in the morning then at break you'd probably just have something like eggs on toast then at lunch, these sites that I worked on, Bjorn, they were big. You know, one of the last ones I worked on had 1,600 blokes working on it. So you can imagine, yeah. it was big. Mm. And in the cafeteria area, you could have, you know, all sorts for dinner. I won't go through the menu. <laughs> but yeah, that I would be eating three big meals a day and then the rest. And, uh, and a lot of beer, I have to say, back then as well in my early 20s, being with the lads. It used to be like um, 10 pints of... Stella or a night and uh yeah i couldn't do that now that'd wipe me but you know, the calorie intake was humongous and i understand that people that have a real a job that's um very physically demanding need the calories but i'm getting away from the point here food starvation we're, 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 we're way too comfortable yeah and um here's another thing um that i've I'm not, 
I, I don't want to be quoted on this because I'm not exactly sure, but um, and I know I need to be careful on here on YouTube when it comes to the what comes after the 4G. <laughs> <laughs> um, that new mobile network, I, I, it's it's safe to say the Internet of Things. You know, that's that's still we can st we are still allowed to say that. Um, the Internet of Things and that that they are building out now, it's going to increase the energy consumption so much that we will see only because of that a spike in pollution. So, and you, you know, th this is this is me trying to use my logic and sense and reason, looking at the bigger picture out there and i don't see much logic being applied to at all well i don't i don't see a lot of that because on one side you have the people talking about well you're a nasty man because you drive a petrol car and then i say well you know what i'm okay with not having all information about myself sent to some companies I don't want that actually. So this uh, this uh, five Jerry's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. We don't need that. No. I don't. No. Want, Why do we need that? Why? I don't need, and I don't want a self-driving car. I'm okay as I am now, and uh, so can, maybe I can still drive my old petrol car. Uh, and uh, you know, not feel bad about that. I don't feel bad about that, but you know what I'm <laughs> trying to. Um, yeah. So can we just, you know, try to be a little bit more sensible about everything? Uh, but no, 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 no. We, no. it's like we're on this train with no brakes, and we <laughs> just, it's, it's no stopping, no stopping. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is that is a non-stopping train, and it's and it baffles me. The one that comes after four G, um, it, it baffles me why we really need to have um, smart fridges and and all this kind of. Um, I've been offered twice now uh, to have like a smart meter for my energy hmm. in my house. So no, thank you. No, no. I don't. I don't want that. And. This is the thing that, that concerns me, and people people who I know think I'm way too skeptical about, say, like these things. But with technology, like I have this webcam plugged in right now. When this computer's, when I'm finished, I will be pulling that lead out. If if you think that I'm a crazy person, everyone, then you know that's 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 fine. But that I do not like it. Now with the smartphones. I've had, I'm not the only person to say it, and people have said to me, okay, yeah, I have to agree with you. I will be talking, say if I was talking with Bjorn and we were having a conversation about a new sofa, you know, sofa, Bjorn, and um, yeah, a new sofa, and I was just talking to him. I never searched for it. I was just talking to him. I'm going to get one. And, uh, and then we have another chat about it. Then your phone starts giving you adverts. Yeah of sofas or mobile phones or whatever you're talking about and i'm not the only person to say it. and people who are not even skeptical believe all the mainstream papers i've heard plenty of them say yeah i actually have to agree with you that's happened to me before several times so if you do not think that with this equipment that people are not listening in they they are they are it's uh, <laughs> you know what happened happen uh, you know what happened when I stopped using my smartphone? The ads on internet, you know, when I use uh, whatever site, there are ads there. It's all over the place. <laughs> ads for women, ads for young women, ads for old women. Uh, they don't know who I am anymore, which, yeah. which makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but but that 
it, when I had a smartphone, it was targeted, you know, it was pinpointed and targeted. Now, yeah. I, I actually don't mind that, but, and, and people, they think that's, uh, well, no, that's not so bad, but they seem to not understand that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and um, I think we'll try to avoid getting into what's the rest of the iceberg, so to speak. Uh, yeah. On yeah. YouTube and all that. But um, but yeah, let's get back to um, just before, you know, just to finish off this very pleasant conversation. Um, you know, I like to try to give some kind of advice if we could give people some advice on how how to get back to nature how to connect with nature especially if you're in a city if you and i have to say i stand corrected because i've said in many of my videos we need to get out of the cities and so on but you know of course i do understand that means people are coming <laughs> building houses and all that <laughs> chopping down the trees i don't want that so but anyway uh what should people do what can people do to get back to nature um i think now i'm gonna go on about like what you said um about getting out of the cities and then you made another video which you've just said um about it's not necessarily and i think that's maybe where bjorn was going with it as well because they're depending on where you live, there isn't enough room for everyone to be out of the sea to a degree without their losing the agricultural land and everything else and get and forests. Um, but, well, maybe there is in some places, but getting out of the city doesn't mean necessarily moving out of the city. Get out of the city, get into nature, make some time take your children do you not want i mean oh, this is not an accusation sort of thing i may say but but do you want your children not to grow up not seeing what nature is being in the woods walking by rivers and um, even being by the coast um a quiet coastline is such a when you can find it it's beautiful hmm. but making time is important for your mental health and also physical health but nature is important. Without it, we're nothing. So we should respect it and, and try to not do this as well, which I see. People taking their dogs for a walk in the woods and they're like, they're like this with their mobile phone, mm. yeah. walking around the paths. You see, I don't walk along the paths. I, I go off the paths. I, I tend to, when I go to the woods, avoid people because i want to connect with nature and that's what you should do you should get out there make time for it we're so busy busy running around running around doing everything like it's important sorry it's my dog <laughs> it's important to just take that bit of time even if it's just once a week for half an hour I think if you've done that once a week for half an hour, you would find an improvement in your life. And I really do believe that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, can I add also that you can actually grow some vegetables in your, in your window, um, you know, something like that as well. Uh, everyone can do that. And, and you, you don't have to go and move to I don't know Alaska and become a, <laughs> a mountain man and all that you, you, you know well that that's that's awesome I, I always wanted to do that when I was a kid but um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can you know baby steps and all that um, and you don't as you said you don't necessarily have to move to the countryside but you need to get out from time to time and um, yeah um, okay i think actually um i want to remind everyone uh listening and watching to go and subscribe to your channel uh the links the link is in the video description 
Um, and again, I want to thank you for, you know, just uh, making a video and, and uh, asking people to sign that petition to get my books published in English. Uh, and yeah, lots of people are wondering why, why haven't they been published in English yet? And um, the corona and all that has to do, has a lot of to do with that because I changed the agent the agency uh, just before we went into this whole mess and then the publishing business sort of in Europe and North America closed down. But, um, but anyway, um, go and um, subscribe to uh, uh, the, go to the link in the video description and, um, and check out uh, the channel, subscribe and all that. You know what to do so yeah <laughs> yeah can i say one thing yeah. uh, thank you also for what you just said and um also thank you so much for the having the video it was so great to talk and i'm sure i mean you could just go on for hours about a lot of this stuff but i just want to say to everyone out there yes i've done a video yesterday and i because i was thinking about it a lot a lot and i really really do want some more reading material so i you all need your help. I need your help because I need to. Uh, sometimes when you're in nature as well, reading a book in nature can be very, very pleasant. Hmm. Uh, sign the petition. Sign the petition. Doesn't matter for what reasons, why it hasn't, or all of that. Just sign it. it. It took me about 40 seconds to sign it. If you're not going to sign it for yourself, sign it for your brother in law, sign it for your granddad, whatever. Just sign it. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's very kind of you. And uh, thanks for taking the time to have this chat. Um, I will be looking forward to your upcoming videos and uh, your projects on the new plot of land and, and all that. So, um, yeah. Okay. I think that's all for now. Uh, again, thank you. And thank you for watching and listening. Um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay. Bye.